At the start of the movie, we're introduced to a 12-year-old boy, Henry Garner, who is an avid baseball fan. All the time, he keeps dreaming about becoming a pro one day. He even practices day and night, but unfortunately, the school coach doesn't think he's a good player. Henry is mostly substituted, and whenever he gets to play, he ruins the game and makes his team lose. Henry lives with his mother, Mary, who is a caring woman. She's currently dating Jack, an arrogant guy who doesn't care about anything other than money. Henry hates him a lot, but he has to act nice because of his mother. Later, we get to know that Henry is a big fan of the Chicago Cubs. Every now and then, while doing the laundry, he envisions himself playing for them. At school, Henry has a massive crush on a girl named Becky, but he's too scared to express his feelings to her. One day in the playground, Henry decides to impress her. So, when someone throws a ball high up in the air, he decides to catch it. Henry almost succeeds in doing so, but just then, he steps on another ball lying on the ground and falls down awkwardly. This dislocates his arm, causing him a lot of pain. Henry is immediately taken to the doctor and treated. For a few months, he's forced to stop playing baseball, making him extremely depressed. When the bones finally heal, Henry is taken to the doctor to remove his cast. Unfortunately, the doctor reveals that although the bones have healed, the tendons have fused in a very bad way. Because of this, a slight creaking sound is heard whenever Henry moves his arm. However, the little boy doesn't seem to care. He's happy that he can finally resume playing baseball now. To celebrate his cast-off day, Mary gives him and the boys tickets to the Cubs game. It's revealed that the Chicago Cubs are going through a very bad run of form. Their main pitcher, Chet Stedman, has been struggling badly due to a shoulder injury. The general manager of the club, Larry Fisher, is informed that if the Cubs are unable to sell every ticket of every game this year, they will have to forfeit the franchise. During the game, Chet is hit for yet another home run by the opposing team. Henry catches the ball, luckily, but when it's time to throw it back, he's a bit nervous because of his recently healed arm. However, after some pressure from his friends and the crowd, he swings his arm and throws it to the pitch. Shockingly, the ball travels at a supersonic speed. The commentators are amazed that someone has thrown a ball 435 feet with such force. Larry is also shocked, so he demands to have the kid in his team. The very next day, representatives from the Chicago Cubs arrive at Henry's house to hand him a tryout for the club. The boy is ecstatic that his dream has finally come true, so he immediately accepts the offer. Later, while practicing, the pitches thrown by Henry are over 100 miles per hour. Larry wants him in the team at any cost, and so he offers Jack 10% of Henry's contract if he's able to get the boy to agree to play. As expected, the little boy agrees right away. On his first game, Henry is briefed about the basics by the team coach, San Martinella. He promises to guide him into becoming a superstar. In the next scene, the games begin as the Chicago Cubs play the New York Mets. Chet is still unable to throw a good pitch, so the owner and the crowd demand that Henry be put on. Although reluctant, San agrees. The little boy is nervous as it's his first time in front of a large crowd. To make matters worse, his first pitch is hit for a home run by a scary-looking batter. The man then teases Henry as he leaves the field. Despite this, the little boy composes himself and although he throws some bad pitches, he still manages to help his team beat the Mets. After the victory, Henry returns to his school where he talks to Becky for the first time. His friends ask him to invite her to the boat they're making, but Henry cannot do it due to his nervousness. The friends then go to the lake to make their boat, because of which Henry reaches late to practice. In the next game, Henry is once again asked to pitch for the Cubs after relentless chanting from the crowd. His pitch hasn't really improved, but he's put on anyway. San asks Chet to give the boy some advice before he pitches. The latter reluctantly obliges and gives the boy some vague suggestions on the pitch. Although Henry doesn't understand much of it, he gets the motivation and ends up performing well. After some excellent pitches, he manages to win the game for his team. Everyone is ecstatic, especially Jack, 
who is now Henry's manager and has signed him up for a Pepsi sponsorship deal. After the game, Mary thanks Chet for helping her son out. The two then get to talking and form an instant connection. The next few games, Henry continues delivering outstanding performances, winning games one after another. In one instance, San even sends him out to bat. Henry gets to first base after the pitcher throws four balls and manages to unease the pitcher by teasing him and stealing one base after another, winning the game for his team. With days passing, Mary and Chet start getting closer, since the latter is like a guardian to Henry. One day, as they're dancing during a party, Jack notices them and realizes that Mary is slowly getting away from him. Just then, Larry Fisher arrives with some news. The Yankees want to buy Henry for a whopping $25 million. Initially, Jack doesn't want the transfer, but when Larry promises to give him 10% as well as get rid of Chet from the team, he agrees. Cut to a few weeks, Henry has become a huge success. He also leads his team to their first consecutive victories and to the final of the division championship, where they'll once again play the New York Mets. However, because of this, Henry is unable to give time to his friends and help them prepare the boat. He even gets into an argument with them because they've started making fun of him. During Henry's Pepsi commercial shoot, Jack cleverly makes Mary sign the selling contract by lying to her that it's Henry's new contract with the Cubs. On the other hand, Larry announces to Chet that he will not be given a new contract. His last game will be at the end of the season. The news devastates Chet, but he decides to accept it like a man. Back at home, Jack starts acting tough on Henry and forces him to do photo shoots. When the boy refuses, Jack taunts him, saying his father was a coward who left them for someone else. Mary hears this and gets enraged. One thing leads to another and she ends up punching Jack, after which she kicks him out of the house. With Jack gone now, Henry goes to his friends and apologizes for not being able to help them. They then complete the boat together and take it for a ride on the lake. There, they also see Becky and her friends and decide to give them a ride as well. The group has a great time together. After returning home, Henry talks to his mom about his future, and the two eventually come up with an important decision. On the day of the final game, Henry and his mom head up to the owner of the Chicago Cubs and announce that Henry will no longer return to play next season. He also asks the owner why they wanted to sell him, but Larry brushes the question away. Shortly after, the game is about to begin. Despite having an injured shoulder, San asks Chet to start the pitching. The latter is scared and surprised, but he's also determined to win the game. Everyone, even the owner, comes down to the stands to watch the final game. Chet begins the innings with a few nice pitches. However, soon his arm starts acting up again and he feels extreme pain in his shoulders. Despite this, he keeps on playing. In the sixth inning, he gets hit for a few runs. In the fit of passion and adrenaline, he throws a pitch so hard that it breaks the bat of the hitter. Chet tries to throw the ball again, but he can't because his shoulder is hurt badly. So he runs with the ball in hand to get the batter out. There are still three more innings remaining. However, Chet tells San that he's out and that he can't pitch anymore. With no options left, the coach hands the ball to Henry and requests him to win the game for them. Henry agrees but tells him that this will be his final game. As he walks into the field, the crowd cheers his name voraciously. Initially, he gives a very good performance and makes his team lead by one run. At the end of the final inning, the pressure is all on the Cubs to defend this one-run lead. However, everyone is confident that Henry will secure the win. He confidently walks onto the field with determination in his eyes. But just as he's about to pick up the ball, he slips and falls down awkwardly. The landing is similar to how he broke his hand in the first place. The crowd gasps, but Henry gets up, claiming that he's okay. He heads up to the cube to throw the ball, but when he finally does, it barely reaches the batter. Henry looks at his arm and moves it around. This is when he realizes that the creaking sound is gone, and now he no longer has his super arm anymore. Despite this, he tries to make a pitch, 
but ends up throwing four consecutive balls, getting the batter to first base. The crowd, the owner, and even the commentators are confused at what they're seeing. Henry calls over his teammates for a small meeting and reveals that his arm is gone and he can no longer pitch like before. Hearing this, everyone is worried, but Henry mentions that he has a plan. He then briefs them about it, and the match resumes. Henry gets ready to pitch, and as the previous batter leaves the first base to steal a run, he realizes that Henry doesn't really have the ball. So the outfield player gets him out with the fake ball trick. However, they have to eliminate two more players to win the game. When the next player arrives, Henry throws four balls again to get the batter to first base. Unfortunately, this guy is not going to fall for the deceit. He doesn't leave the base, so Henry starts taunting and making fun of him. The plan works, and when the man has had enough, he makes a run for it. Henry rushes with the ball and gets the man out. This sends the crowd into a state of frenzy. Now the Cubs can win the championship and qualify for the playoffs if they manage to see off one final player. Unfortunately, the batter turns out to be the same scary-looking guy who had hit Henry for a home run in his first game. This makes the little boy scared, and he realizes that the man will probably hit another home run. Despite this, Henry throws the ball with all his might, but it travels so slowly that the scary man is taken off guard. He misses the ball completely. Although annoyed, the batter gets ready for the next pitch. This time, he manages to hit it, but the ball goes behind for a foul, leaving him with only one strike. Henry realizes that the same type of pitch won't get the batter out. Just then, he remembers how his mother always passes him the sunscreen by looping it into the air. The idea is a risky one, but Henry decides to try it anyway. He throws the ball as she does, and surprisingly, this gets the batter out and the crowd goes crazy. Everybody cheers as the Chicago Cubs win the division and qualify for the playoffs. In the final scene, we see that Henry is now playing in the rookie league. He has improved substantially, even without his magical arm. Even his crush Becky has become one of his biggest fans.